All right, welcome to Service for Christ uh, Baptist Church. We're getting ready now to uh, go live and thank you all for joining us. The opinions and views expressed by the participants during this broadcast do not reflect nor represent Service for Christ Ministries Incorporated, our faith partners, or any affiliated organization. Service for Christ Ministries Incorporated assumes no responsibility nor legal liability for the expressions or opinions made during this broadcast. This broadcast serves as an open forum for the right of the First Amendment, freedom of speech. Furthermore, this broadcast may not be used, altered, or edited without the authorization of Service for Christ Ministries Incorporated. Praise the Lord, saints, and welcome to the Gospel Truth. You take all the green this world has to offer. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, we want to welcome you to another segment of the Gospel Truth on, this is November the 15th, 2020, and we're just so excited, happy, and thrilled to be with you once again uh, to present this segment of the Gospel Truth. Listen, uh, the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 it records these words at the first verse. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the Gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also you are saved. If you keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scripture. This is the gospel truth. That our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he came to serve as the perpetuation, in fact, the sacrifice for mankind. Going back to the original sin of Adam and Eve, their trespass against God in the Garden of Eden when they took from the, the unforbidden fruit and ate from it. God had already given them a command telling them of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shall not eat of it, for in that day, in the day that you eat thereof, you shall surely die. Although it was over 900 years later, when Adam actually died, once he committed that sin, that transgression against the will of God, against, in fact, the imperative, the command of God, the death process set in and his body started to decay. Similar to what we experience today. When we sin, you might wonder, well, I had fornication, adultery, murder, incest, lasciviousness, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, crowd of life, all of that's incorporated in it. Even uh, homosexuality, all of that's included. But God said that he was sent a redeemer to serve as the perpetuation for our sins, no matter what they are. There was only one requirement, and that is that you accept our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as your personal Savior. We had a sermon in our 
830 service this morning from one of our associate ministers, uh, Minister Joyce Scott. Uh, it will be posted on YouTube later today. And she had a simple message for those people. Follow God. Something very easy to understand. Difficult to do, yet easy to understand. And so when we talk about the gospel of Jesus Christ and what we found in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, as we just read it, it's absolutely critical that if you want to be saved, that you will, in fact, believe, according to Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, that Jesus is Lord and that he died for our sins, those of us that are willing to accept him as Lord and Savior. I do. I accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. He's Lord over my life. Lord over my body, Lord over my problems, Lord over my transgressions. I, I, I am a sinner also. How do I know that? Because the Bible teaches us that, I believe it's Romans 6.23, uh, for the wages of sin oh, uh, 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 is death. And the Bible also tells us, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I'm in that category. I fall short. Uh, last week, Reverend Harry E. Lundy preached a sermon on the standard the standard. If you want to see that broadcast from last Sunday, that powerful message that was delivered by our internet pastor, uh, Reverend Harry E. Lundy, then you can go to our YouTube page and you can see the sermon on the Servants for Christ Baptist Church. Servants for Christ Baptist Church. And that sermon is right there, the, the, uh, the standard. He preached another sermon on the seed. Reverend London preaches some very powerful messages, and that's why we have him here again, our internet pastor, uh, uh, assistant to the pastor at Servant for Christ Baptist Church. We're very proud of him and pleased to have him. Reverend London, do you have any thoughts about the, um, about the uh, uh, gospel uh, as preached in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4? You got any thoughts on that scripture? Uh, yes, I have thoughts. <clears throat> Even the sermon that uh, 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 Minister George Scott gave this morning talks about following Jesus. And in following <clears throat> Jesus, he's our leader in the resurrection. Uh -huh. So if we follow Jesus and he was resurrected, that means that we're going to be resurrected too. So our, our being resurrected is very important. So we want to follow Jesus so that we too will resurrect right behind him. Amen. Amen. Well, I understand today you're going to give us um, some theology embedded in that theology is going to be an English composition lesson for us. <laughs> and so I understand that your sermon is going to be very thrilling to us. Uh, would you mind sharing more of that, what your title is, and uh, then move right directly into uh, the message that you're going to deliver to God's people today? And God bless. Let me pray for you before we begin. Lord Jesus, I ask your blessings upon Reverend Harry E. Lundy as he brings forth the message today with boldness, clarity, and power. Envelope him, cover him in your love and your grace, indeed, all of your mercy, to continue and bless him as he goes forth to propagate this gospel of Jesus Christ. Bless the words of his mouth. May they come out in a way that we can understand it we see clarity from the message that he's going to deliver. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, we pray. And the church says, amen. Reverend London, thank you so much. Please go and proceed however the Lord leads you. Thank you so much for all you do for service for Christ Baptist Church and for your ministry. Amen. Thank you, amen. Reverend Jones. <laughs> Again, the title of my message is the present tense of a verb. And most of us remember Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem with a very great multitude spreading their clothes on the road and, and others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The multitudes ahead of Jesus as Jesus was riding on a donkey and the multitude behind him cried out, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is, is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And many were there looking on. 
including the Pharisees, Sadducees, chief priests, elders, and other people. And the question arise, who is he? Who is this? So the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. What? Jesus cleanses the temple. Using the fig tree that he had withered, he taught a lesson. And now the chief priests and the elders of the people wanted to know by what authority is he doing these things and who gave him this authority? Jesus asked them to tell him the baptism of John. Where was it from? From heaven or from man? You should know how that went. Jesus told a few parables. Um, the Pharisees and the Sadducees are at odds with each other. They have been for since they, I guess, enacted that organization, those two groups. The Pharisees believe in the resurrection and they likely are the ones who made this over the over 600 additional laws. They had more interaction with the people. The Sadducees, on the other hand, did not believe in the resurrection had little or no interaction with the people. They only followed the five books of Moses, the Pentateuch. They were the elite and made up majority of the Sanhedrin, the Israelites' uh, Supreme Court. If they could, they would like to use this opportunity to embarrass our Lord especially in front of the great multitudes. They perhaps wanted to make Jesus look stupid, so they proceeded with a question regarding the law of liberate marriage. Uh, liberate uh, is spelled L-E-V-I-R-A-T-E, -E, marriage law. It looks like it's related to Levi, the Levi's. The, or the Levites, of course, it's L-E-V-I-R-A-T-E, but it's a Latin word, and most people say it doesn't have anything to do with the tribe of Levite. But I see a connection there. I'll bring that to your attention when I come to it. Now, if you turn with me to Matthew, which is my scripture, chapter 22, verses 23 to 33. Again, that's Matthew chapter 22, verses 23 to 33. And it reads like this. The same day the Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to him and asked him, saying, teacher, Moses said that if a man dies having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up offspring for his brother. Now there were with us seven brothers. Now when the uh, Sadducee said this, uh, it's hard to tell whether they were telling the truth or if they're making up a parable or something. It's just don't really know, but he said, now there were with us seven brothers. The first died after he had married. And having no offspring, left his wife to his brother. Likewise, the second also. And the third, even to the seventh. Last of all, the woman or the wife, died also. 
Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife of the seven will she be? For they all had her. Jesus answered and said to them, you are ignorant or you are mistaken, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels of God in heaven. But concerning the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was spoken by, to you by God saying, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And when the multitude heard this, they were astonished at his teaching. Now the Pharisees saw that Jesus silenced the Sadducees and wanted to take their shot at Jesus. But in silencing the Sadducees, Jesus said something that the Pharisees evidently missed in their reading and study of the scripture. I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. The emphasis is on the present tense of the verb to be, as opposed to the verb was. God didn't say I was the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, but he said I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Emphasis on the present tense. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had been dead long since. God made this, spoke this in the book of Exodus, chapter 3, verse 6. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. God was speaking to Moses and he said to Moses, I am the God of your father. And Abraham, uh, uh, Moses' father had passed away even. So their spirit still lives. Their spirit still lives for a reason. The reason is that they will be resurrected into a new body that is incorruptible. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Uh, when Moses spoke, when God spoke to Moses back in Exodus 3:6. The part of God being not the God of the dead wasn't there. Jesus said that in the New Testament, God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Uh, adding some more explanation, some more information to that saying. The Sadducees wrongfully do not believe in the resurrection as many of us today, likewise, in this world do not believe in the resurrection. And the Sadducees attempted to embarrass our Lord, they were outmaneuvered. This elite group of religious leaders were told by our Lord, 
in front of the multitude that they did not know the scriptures, nor the power of God. Jesus told them they were mistaken. In one translation, Jesus told them they were ignorant. What about yourselves? Do you know the scripture and the power of God? If not, why not? Do you seek to know the truth? Or are you satisfied with the things that tickle your ears? Many people who are full of hatred toward another person will love to hear bad things about that person they hate. Hate like that is against God and should not be. They will not seek the truth because they love to hear the bad about the person they hate. Many people don't seek after the truth. They just like what they hear. If the bad info sounds good, they will immediately believe it, whether it is true or not. The truth is suppressed by ungodly and unrighteous persons. Because of our hardness, of our heart, of our impenitent heart, we are treasuring up for ourselves wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to each one according to our deeds. Can you imagine that, that we are, are, are storing up wrath for the things we do today that are against God? Eternal life is to those who by patient continuance in doing good seek and seek glory, honor, and immortality. But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness and indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish, on every soul of man who does evil, God will, we have stored up wrath and it will come upon us. And the Bible say to the Jew first and also to the Greek, but glory, honor, and peace to everyone who works what is good to the Jew first and also to the Greek, Romans, Chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. The Sadducees, Israel's elite, did not know Deuteronomy 25, verses 5 through 10, because of what they told Jesus was wrong. This was a Jewish law established for the purpose of keeping the land in the Jewish family. It was called the Liberate marriage law. God allowed each tribe an inheritance of the land according to their family. And we see here that God allow us to own land. You have countries that don't allow people to own land but we see in the word of God that God allowed people to own land. And in this case, uh, Jewish law established for the purpose of keeping the land in the family had this law. It was called the, the liberate marriage law. God allowed each tribe to inherit uh, an inheritance of the land according to their family. But to the tribe of Levi, and that's where I think Levi seems like it fit in with that, that liberate marriage law. But to the tribe of Levi, 
Moses had given no inheritance. The Lord God of Israel was their inheritance, as he had said to them. So if a brother of a dead man who died childless is single, he is not to marry outside the family, but must marry his dead brother's wife in order to provide an heir to keep the property and land in the family. It was not compulsory that a single brother do so, but he didn't. But if he didn't, he would be confronted with contempt and humiliation by the elders. The Sadducees were talking foolishness. Marriages are only for here on earth for reproduction. There is no reproduction in the resurrection or in heaven. When Jesus said, we will be like the angels, he did not mean that we will change into being an angel and having six wings and all. He meant that we will not be reproducing and getting married in heaven like the angels did not do this. Angels do not reproduce and they do not die. Therefore, they do not marry. And we will be like the angels because we will no longer die, reproduce, and therefore need not marry. The Sadducees should have known these truths. They are in the five books of Moses that they read and hold to and follow. Exodus, the second book of Moses, is very clear what God said about even Moses' father who had died, but of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob who had been dead for a few hundred years. I am the God of these, the present tense of the verb. Not I was, not the past tense. Moreover, God said, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, and he was afraid to look upon God, Exodus 3 and 6. Who, who is Moses? Father, I get ready to say who was Moses' father, but God speaks up to him in the present tense, so therefore he's living right now. So who is Moses' father? The Bible simply says in Exodus 2, 1 and 2, it says, and a man of the house of Levi went and took as wife a daughter of Levi. So the woman conceived and bore a son. Of course, that son was Moses. The Bible says nothing further about Moses' father, but we do know that he was a godly man because he still lives in the spirit. Jesus answer to the Sadducees was loud and clear in furnishing more information and giving more understanding to Exodus chapter three, verse six, when he also said, God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. 
Jesus spoke in the present tense and not the future tense when he replied to Martha, who said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. She was talking about her brother Lazarus, who had died over four days ago. Jesus did not say to her, I will be the resurrection, but said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, yet he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? John chapter 11, verses 24, 25. Too bad for the Sadducees. They were sad, you see. They did not believe in the resurrection nor in angels, like many people today. They had a different belief system. They rejected the natural, that they even rejected the additional 613 laws the Pharisees adhered to. And they rejected the rest of the scriptures. They were ignorant to Psalm 1611, for you will not leave my soul in Sheol. Now, Psalm 49, 15, just a few Psalms, but there are many more. But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave. Some people think that the resurrection is not in the Old Testament. But it's all through the Testament and all in, in Psalms as well. And I just gave a few examples there a little more about those Sadducees. They were known for their denial of things supernatural. They denied the resurrection of the dead and the existence of angels. Unlike the Pharisees, they rejected human tradition and scorned legalism. They accepted only the Pentateuch as authoritative. They tended to be wealthy, aristocratic, members of the priestly tribe, Levites, Levites. And in the days of Herod, their sect controlled the temple. This particular day that they came to Jesus was on Tuesday. Don't forget Jesus had already made his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Guess what else Jesus had already done? He had already emptied out the temple for which the Sadducees were in control of. The Sadducees were not the only group who came to Jesus in order to try and entrap him or to make a fool out of him. Before the Sadducees came to Jesus trying to entrap him, a group of Jews called the Herodians or Herodians came. Also, the Pharisees were plotting on how they might entangle our Lord Jesus. So the Pharisees sent the Herodians along with their disciples to Jesus to, to try and entrap him about taxes. Our Lord perceived their wickedness and said, why do you test me, you hypocrites? Show me the tax money. Whose image and inscription is this? They said it's Caesar's. Render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's 
and to God the things that are God's. They marveled over what they had heard, and they left him. They left him. It was after this that the Sadducees came and got muzzled. And the multitude was astonished at what they heard. Now the Pharisees were gathering together after the muzzling. And one of the lawyer Pharisees asked Jesus, which is the great commandment in the law? They were sneakily polite calling our Lord rabbi or teacher. Now when they ask that question, I wonder what commandments did they have in mind? Was it one of the Ten Commandments or one of the 613 commandments they had made? Whichever. We know our Lord would give them the absolute truth. And the absolute truth is you shall have that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Now, this quote is from Deuteronomy 6 and 5. Part of this is the Shema, Hebrew for here, H-E-A-R, here, Deuteronomy 6 and 4. That verse says, heart, soul, strength. But some manuscripts added mind. But here's the, here's the deal. The use of the various terms is not meant to point out distinct human faculties, but to underscore the completeness of the kind of love that is called for. And the second great commandment is like it said Jesus, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, some folk think that the second commandment is a mandate for self-love. Actually, it is about the golden rule but in different words. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Likewise, on the resurrection hang all of Christianity. That's why it's important. And that's why it's important to understand that God mentioned that in the present tense. I am. And that I was the God of these people. The Pharisees were gathered together and Jesus asked them a question. Whose son is Christ? They said the son of David. And Jesus said to them, how then does David in the spirit call him Lord? saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. If David then calls him Lord, how is he his son? And no one was able to answer that question. That shut the mouth of the Pharisees. From that day on, no one asked Jesus any more questions. Now, how could one answer that question? 
what is the right answer to that question? How can David call his descendant Lord? Because his descendant is also the son of God. So David would call the son of God Lord. Remember Jesus was incarnated into Mary by the Holy Spirit. Both Mary and Joseph were from the line of David. Jesus came through Mary to earth, who was of the line of David. From this regard, he is the son of David. The present tense of the verb to be, I am indicate a very important reality regarding our faith and is the very reason why we stand upon the scripture of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 through 4. We can't just overlook the resurrection. It's the most, ex and that, that verse of scripture is the most extensive treatment of the resurrection. Is in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 through 4, the very Bible passage for which we stand upon. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. We who believe in him, though we may die, we shall live. And whoever lives and believes in Jesus shall never die. Believe this is our charge. It is God's promise. Amen. And I notice a lot of people talk, speak as though that of course, they speak that they need to accept Christ in their hearts and believe in him. But there's another way of looking at that. The other way of looking at that is for Christ to, to accept you. I should be wondering, is Christ going to accept me? Because many came that day saying, Lord, Lord, did I not prophesy in your name? And in your name, did I not cast out demons and perform many miracles? And Jesus said, depart from me, you duels of iniquity, for I never knew you. So it's important for Christ to accept us. And so the way for Christ to accept us is to repent. Turn away from the stuff that we've been doing. Most of us still love our sins that we committed in the past. Have we really repented? We need to repent. We can't come through that narrow gate with our baggage. We need to let go some things. Everything. And just look toward Christ. Everything that we've done that displeases God. Don't let little things slide and enjoy it. Oh, I did that in the past. That was cool. I like doing that. No, get rid of that. You remember what happened to Lot's wife? She still had baggage back in uh, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. She halted. She faulted by looking back and she salted. We need to let go of all of it. We really need to repent. We can't half step with repentance because you may not be accepted by Christ. We have to go all the way with our repentance. We must turn away. We must acknowledge our sins and completely turn away and follow Jesus, be able to follow Jesus into the resurrection and be with him in heaven. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer.
Father, we come before your throne of grace, strongly seeking your mercy. Of course, it's difficult for us to even repent all the way. It seems difficult for us because we still hold on to stuff. Stuff that we may like that's against you. Help us with that, Father. Have mercy on us. Fill us through the power of your Holy Spirit in our inner being. Oh, Lord, we love you and, and we need you. We need your help. You have strongly demonstrated your love. But I know we are weak in demonstrating our love back towards you. We need your help with that, Father. We thank you for your word. We thank you for all that you have done and all that you purpose to do. So Father, please guide us and lead us and have mercy on you and we thank you for your grace. In Jesus name, we pray these things. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. We praise God and thank you, uh, Reverend Lundy, for that powerful, powerful message today. The present tense of a verb. Speaking right now, right? Speaking right now in action is, is what I got from what you were saying about the present tense of a verb. Verb is action. And right. you're speaking action right now in the right. present, not in the past, and uh, certainly not uh, in the future, but in the present right now. You know, as you were preaching your message today, I thank God for your message, uh, Reverend London. You are our, our internet pastor. And so I was thanking God for your message today and the way that you delivered that message with so much courage, indeed so much conviction. And then, uh, I hate to use this term, but piggybacking off of what we uh, had already preached this morning through our associate minister, uh, Joyce Scott, and the powerful message that she delivered at 8.30. And then here you come with even a more powerful word to build on that. You know, I thought about the Sanhedrin, uh, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and uh, there were also the Essenes, the Zealots, all were a part of that Jewish council uh, of the Sanhedrin, uh, which are the Pharisees and the scribes and those that I just named. And I think for a long time, I read the Bible when I read about the Sadducees, and I didn't know who they were or what they did not believe in the resurrection. And I read about the Pharisees, the scribes who were promoted to Pharisees. I didn't know who they were or that they believed in the resurrection. I did not know that they made up the Jewish council and I did not know when Christ was taken from the Garden of Gethsemane uh, by the Roman soldiers um, that they took him to the Sadducees first. And then later they had six trials and the whole Jewish council, the Sanhedrin was involved in that. And I say all that to say that many people read the Bible and they do like I did, they read over top of it rather than going down in it and understanding the distinction between the Sadducees being the Pharisees and um, uh, those other parts of, of that uh, of my, the scribes and all those people, the Pharisees and Sadducees. It takes time to study this. So your explanation of, of, of God speaking in the present tense it takes time to unravel that word, to go into it deep down inside of it, take a deep dive to understand and not just read over top of it, but to go down in the word, study it and read it. And as you were reading, I was thinking about uh, Romans 6, 3, 4, and 5, when you talk about the resurrection of the dead and that we, um, as we live with Christ, as we die with him, then we die with him through our belief that Jesus Christ was resurrected from the grave, as you pointed out, all of Christianity hinge upon that one fact. That is so true, so, so true, that we must understand what Romans 6, 3, 4, and 5, in addition to the scriptures that you gave. Amen. People were looking for a sign. You talked about that. 
and, 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 you know, I can't help, excuse me, I, I can't help but wonder uh, why, what is the real problem with people that uh, they don't really believe in the resurrection? I mean, people today don't believe in the resurrection. You pointed out something very interesting. You said um, that the Pharisees and the Sadducees were on this side. But you know, if you look at the history of the New Testament, when the last um, book of the Old Testament, which we consider the last book of the Old Testament, Malachi was written, there was 400 years of silence. Some say 430 between Malachi and the opening of the New Testament. When we closed out the New Testament, the only thing we had was the Levitical priesthood, God's appointed priest. You can go look at Deuteronomy, Numbers and all that, Leviticus to get a more uh, background study. That's when we had the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the Essenes and the Zealots and those folk. When we got to the New Testament that you spoke of, when we open up the New Testament, we see that the, uh, the Israel is now occupied by a Roman legion and they're building infrastructure and roads and things like that. It's very interesting that they were paving the way for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as you talked about in your message today. And yet we have people today that have the Old Testament. You talked about Lot, Solomon, Gomorrah, and those things. And in, in spite of all the things that people have in front of them today, people still do not believe in the resurrection. And they don't believe in God. They've gone to this uh, spirituality. As though spirituality, who do they identify with in spirituality? No God, I'm just spiritual. And so that's why it's very important for you and me as ambassadors for God, as pastors, that we move forward with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I just want to ask one question. Uh, you talked about repenting and repentance. Why is it so difficult for people to repent and understand that they will never die? that once their spirit leaves this body, that the spirit lives forever, and that they are going to be resurrected into the newness of life as Jesus Christ was. Why is this such a difficult challenge for people? It truly is a difficult challenge for people. And, and uh, to, cause some of the things that they, that they, they said and doing they liked it, <laughs> and and, uh, 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 and they would look back at it as something they enjoy. And the thing, the only thing I can think of in in uh, uh, really truly repenting is staying in much prayer, uh, asking uh, God to help them in getting those love, those things of the world, that love of the world that they send in take it out of their system, that they may be able to turn away from that and not even look back at it as, as something they like. There's a lot of prayer. That's why uh, Paul say we must always pray, all kinds of prayers on all occasions. So the only way I think we can get rid of that is through prayer, because it's hard for everybody. It was even difficult for Paul. So it's an awful lot of prayer. And it was very difficult even for Peter and it let us, and it keeps us humble. And we can't get into heaven otherwise. If we're not humble, it's no way we're gonna be able to. We won't be set for heaven. And a lot of times, we have to look for Christ to accept us. Who are we? We gonna accept Christ? I'm gonna accept you I accept Christ. Today. Who are we? <laughs> <laughs> you better make sure Christ accept you. <laughs> yeah. So yes, I, it is difficult and prayer is the thing uh, that will help us with that calling upon God to help us there. Yeah. Uh, you know, earlier today in, in the message uh, about follow God, you know, we, uh, Minister George Scott talked a lot about 
the uh, over uh, 70, uh, 70 million people that voted and 75 or 76 voted uh, for President-elect Joe Biden and uh, President, Vice President-elect uh, Kamala Harris. And over 70 million voted for uh, the current president. And, and her, her, her point was, if you can vote for these people as leaders, why can't you vote, take your one vote and vote for Jesus Christ? Amen. I thought that that was such a compelling statement to make uh, because Jesus Christ ultimately is the one that uh, can cast your soul and body into hell. Yeah, and those and those elect those people that we will vote for can't do nothing for us, <laughs> and they can mislead us. To the, they go the wrong way. Yeah, I mean, you notice that this is the first time in history where we see people voting for uh, candidates, a man, all we're asking is just vote for Jesus Christ, just vote for him one time in your life, just say, Lord, I turn my life over to you. You are the author and finisher of my faith. And I know that if I turn my life over to you, uh, then there will be abundant living in this life and in the afterlife. I guess that the thing that, that really bothers me is that we saw violence in DC yesterday because people are fighting over ideology and in some cases over lies mm -hmm. and not even dealing with the truth and the reality of the truth. But they were rather, as my wife said earlier this morning, the blind leading the blind into the ditch and all perish rather than following Jesus into the truth. It's, it's, it's very interesting that you and I as ambassadors for Christ are uh, trying to move forward and get this message out, not to brainwash people, not to indoctrinate people, but certainly to give people a chance and opportunity to experience life joys in the way that we understand it through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The, the present tense of the verb means right now, right now, not next week, not tomorrow, not what happened in the past, right now. And you said that uh, uh, Jesus told the person they was ignorant because right. they didn't understand the scripture. And what we see is no matter how much some people read the scripture and how much we explain it to them and try to break it down, either they don't have the ear, the Bible says he that have an ear let him hear, either they don't hear or they don't want to hear as you talked about in your message earlier, they want to go off and do all the pleasures of life like they did in Sodom and Gomorrah. And they do not want to accept um, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I want to just leave you with a uh, thought. Then I'm going to ask the first lady to stand on top of the computer and pray for this message. Uh, uh, what, what is the charge that you have for us? We want to get that when we come back on the other side after we go through our closeout. We want to get the charge when we come back and I'm going to ask the first lady, she would come and pray over, over the computer. You can stand right here or you can sit right here. We're live, so uh, you know, if you don't mind praying for Reverend London's message, do you want to come here or you want to? Okay, okay she's going to stand behind the computer so you can hear her. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Father God, we, let us pray. We come at this time to give you all the praise and all the glory. Lord, we thank you so much for allowing us to hear this message from Reverend London. Yes. Reverend London, the present tense. God's present tense. He's taught us so much about the word and what is going on today and how in the present, we know we need God in our lives and the things that he does for us and continues to do for us. And we thank him so much for overseeing yes. what has happened in this world today. And we know that he lets, it, nothing comes by mistake. He knows what's going on and what needs to be done to correct it. And Lord, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to get it right with you, to have the things done that are right. 
Lord, we thank you so much for this word this morning. Yes. We thank you for what we have been allowed to learn about your word. And we thank you for Reverend Lundy who presented Bless this word him. to us today. We thank you for the gospel truth. Yes. We thank you for the producer, Reverend Dr. Jerry Jones, and for the Servants for Christ Baptist Church. Yes. And Lord, we ask you to continue to be with us as we go on our day-to-day -day and the things that we do to honor and to serve you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're going to go to the other side, and when we come back, uh, we're certainly going to ask you if you would uh, close us out, close us out in, in in prayer, in your own way, and to give us the found thoughts and the charge that you have for God's people. We'll be right back on the other side of the outro. Amen. Hi, this is First Lady Minister Patricia Ann Jones. Thank you for watching our broadcast, The Gospel Truth. Please visit our website. You can visit our Facebook page on Servants for Christ Baptist Church or our YouTube page, Search Servants for Christ Baptist Church. To support our ministry, visit ServantsForChristInc.org. Our church phone number is 240-244-2564. For prayer requests, call 240-241-0849. Or you can always email us on slcbcministry at gmail.com. Thank you for viewing our broadcast. And our I scripture for this year, before, 2020, is Hebrews 11, one, walking in faith. So again, thank you for watching our show. And always come and visit us at Servants for Christ Baptist Church, where our pastor is the Reverend Dr. Jerry W. Jones, Jr. Thank you. See you later. Bye-bye. Salvation comes to those who ask, but many will not. Take the path, they will live on. Once again, Reverend Lonnie, thank you. May God bless you, sir. You can give us the charge. Thank First Lady Patricia Jones for that beautiful prayer. Amen. And sir, if you don't mind giving us the charge and closing us out in your own way, may God bless you. Okay. The, the charge is, Jesus is the resurrection and life and we who believe in him though we may die we shall live and whoever lives and believes in Jesus shall never die the charge is believe this it is God's promise and the, the, also, the truth of the matter is everybody is going to be resurrected. Those who are resurrected in Jesus will be resurrected, go to heaven. Those who are not will be resurrected unto condemnation. And let us bow our heads for the benediction. May the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide in us, both now and forevermore. And the resurrection is a reality. It's real and it's now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless. God bless. God bless. We'll see you next week on another segment of the Gospel Truth. May God bless you all. Goodbye now. Goodbye.